Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Friday. It's October 14th. We made it to Friday, Steph. We made it to Friday and we're going to make it to cooler temperatures a little later on. We'll just work through the humidity over the weekend. Yeah, never ever have we ever been like, we're excited for Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Now we are we're excited for rain. Let's go ahead and look outside with a live cam right now. Not too bad. Actually, lower humidity this morning. Uh, we made a quick run for caffeine and uh, 72 degrees. Not too bad. out. There. Not too bad. Yeah, we found some morning clouds out there, but you can see we are already seeing all of that scatter out leading way to more sunshine. That's going to help those temperatures really warm as we head into the afternoon hours, wrapping up the work week on an above average note. Let's take a look at the pollen count for today. Molds and ragweed both up a little bit compared compared to yesterday in that moderate category. Temperature wise here this 9 a.m. hour in the 60s and low 70s here in the San Antonio area. 71 in Holota, 63 up in the Bernie Stage area, 73 officially over at the airport. So we had that front that moved through yesterday morning that is stalled over our area as we speak. More humidity on the south side of that boundary for us here in San Antonio, reaching up into the hill country, some drier air still in place at the surface, making it feel a little bit more comfortable when you do step out. We're going to see those temperatures warm again, upper 80s, low 90s in store this afternoon. The humidity does work back in this weekend, but we've got a front that is headed our way early next week. And if you're a fall lover, you will like what's on the back side of that front. We'll have all those details coming up in just a few. Falling for fall. I love it. All right, let's get a look at the roadways right now. The commutes obviously dwindled down. People have probably already arrived at their destination, but quick look there at 10 at Callahan. Uh, there was a crash was reported out there a little bit earlier. Things are moving just fine. 35 at Space Center. A few folks making their way on by, but very quiet there at 37 at Fair Avenue. So if you're heading out of town on 37, thankfully there won't be any delays. And there at 1604 Petrenko looks pretty quiet there. Uh, taking you right to the map, obviously, as we see those quiet roadways there on Transcad, we are taking a look at quiet uh, roadways here on our map. Lots of green on the screen, which is good news, but we know that there are going to be active road closures. Really men quick mention here because as we head into the weekend and get ready to drive off, uh, just keep in mind, if you drive through I-10 in Kendall County, pavement work will continue later tonight up until Friday, October 28th. Again, 9 in the evening and 5 in the morning, so early uh, late night owls, early bird commuters expect to see a single main lane closure in both directions right there from US 87 to FM 473. But of course, you can always head over to our website, ksat.com slash traffic for all the latest closures. Back here on Transguide, looks like it's nice and sunny as we get ready to drive off into the weekend. Steph, Sarah? Thank you, Stephen. Here's today's 9 at 9. Officials in Raleigh, North Carolina are expected to give an update today on a mass shooting that happened last night. At least five people are dead, including two police officers. Police do have the suspect in custody. He is said to be a juvenile, but we do not know his exact age. A motive for the shooting has also not been announced. After yesterday's House Select Committee hearing on the Capitol attack, committee members made it clear that they believe the American people deserve answers from former President Donald Trump about that day. The panel agreed to subpoena Trump to testify under oath. However, it's not clear how his possible testimony would play out. More legal trouble for NFL quarterback Deshaun Watson less than two months ago after he settled 23 lawsuits against him. A new civil suit was filed yesterday in Houston for sexual misconduct. Two grand juries declined to indict Watson on criminal charges in previous cases. The NFL fined Watson and suspended him for 11 games in response to earlier allegations. The disgraced South Carolina attorney accused of killing his family will stand trial in January. Alex Murdoch faces multiple charges, including two counts of murder in connection to the death of his wife and his son, who were found shot to death in the family's home more than a year ago. Murdoch has denied involvement in their death, saying he was visiting his mother when they were killed. With prices rising on just about everything, the Federal Reserve is almost certain to raise interest rates by another three quarters of a point next month, making credit card debt and loans more expensive. Rent is up 7%, groceries are up 11%, and medical insurance is up nearly 30%. The one bright spot in the economy seems to be jobs. The latest figures show mortgage rates have hit a 20-year high. According to Freddie Mac, the average rate for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage was 6.92%. That is the highest average rate since April of 2002. 
to more than double what the rate was a year ago. Economists note that home sales are already dropping and prices are cooling. Elon Musk is under federal investigation over his $44 billion Twitter deal. Twitter did not say what specific conduct officials may be investigating, but other filings elsewhere have accused Musk's legal team of failing to produce communications with the Securities and Exchange Commission and Federal Trade Commission, as well as ongoing litigation over whether Musk can walk away from the deal. A study suggests nearly half of symptomatic COVID patients are not fully recovered after more than six months. Persistent COVID symptoms included shortness of breath, chest pain, palpitations, confusion, and more. Researchers said the lack of recovery was associated with more severe infections, older age, certain ethnic groups, as well as pre-existing respiratory disease. There's a shortage of Adderall, according to the FDA, and it could last into next year. The pharmaceutical company is experiencing manufacturing delays. Some people may encounter a temporary back order, but officials expect inventory to recover in the coming months. The FDA recommends people talk to their health care providers about other treatment options. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In your morning headlines, an investigation into a juror and unsatisfied parents after the verdict was read for the Parkland, Florida school shooter. Plus, you may see fewer wild animals around. There is a reason an Artemis One is taking another shot at launching. David Sears is here to explain all of this this morning. Good morning, David. Did you guys ever read that book when you were a kid about the little train trying to get up the hill? Uh, yes. The little engine that could, only my favorite book ever. I think I can. Yeah, yeah, we love it. We're fans. That's what this rocket launch reminded me of. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. I don't, I don't know why. It just, bam, there it was. First, let's start with this pain and anguish from parents of the victims and controversy concerning a juror a day after the shooter who killed 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Yesterday, the shooter was sentenced to life in prison without parole instead of the death penalty. According to CNN, prosecutors believe a juror was threatened by another juror during deliberations and prosecutors now asking for an investigation. In the meantime, parents, fathers, mothers, very emotional when expressing their displeasure with the jury's verdict. Today, we let someone off that murdered 17 people in cold blood. How do you describe someone dying as bursting open their head? I sent my daughter to school and she was shot eight times. I am so beyond disappointed and frustrated with this outcome. I'm disgusted with our legal system. I'm disgusted with those jurors. In prison, I hope and pray he receives the kind of mercy from prisoners that he showed to my daughter and the 16 others. The jury foreman said three jurors voted against the death penalty. One of the factors, the mental health of the shooter. He will be formally sentenced on November 1st, a sentence that they judge cannot change. More proof, lockdowns and learning from home. Blamed on the pandemic has had a huge effect on our kids now and will continue to affect them in the future. One of the benchmarks to gauge that observation is out and it is not good. College bound students who took the ACT posted the lowest average scores in 31 years. A spokesperson for the ACT says many of the students were having to deal with remote learning their sophomore, junior and senior years. Oh, but it does get worse. Let's talk basics, math and reading. A study shows the average score for nine year olds in 2020 revealed the largest decline in reading since 1990 and a decline in math for the first time ever. And have you noticed fewer wild animals around? According to the Worldwide Fund for Nature, the population of wild animals has dropped 69% from 1970 to 2018. But you have to kind of break it down a little to get the specifics. It does not mean that 69% of all animals on Earth just vanished. It is an average of all declines in particular species populations. The authors tracked 32,000 species for five decades. The Amazon rainforest in the Caribbean dropped 94%. They say the reason for the decline, climate change and human activity. And finally, another try for Artemis One. NASA says they will have a launch the early morning hours of November 14th. This is an uncrewed mission. They have a, had a few problems getting the mission off the ground. Remember, they had a faulty sensor, then they had a fuel leak, then they had bad weather. If it is a go, Artemis will blast off the 14th of November and return to Earth on December 9th. Nobody on board, just going to see what it can do out there in space.
Yeah, so. definitely little engine See? that could vibe I told right you, there. Just come right to your head. Then you start thinking, I think I got it. <laughs> Give it then another try. I, I knew I could. I knew I could. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dave. Hey, you'll be back for sports. We will. All right, thank All right. you. And time now is 9.08 and 72 degrees for now. Still head on GMSA at 9. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is a cult classic in a local theater. It's performing the musical right here in San Antonio starting today. We're getting a backstage look in the next half hour. Hi, welcome back. Time now is 9-11. A horse ranch in Bernie is changing the lives of thousands of people one ride at a time. That's right. Tiffany Huertas takes us to a therapeutic riding ranch and shows us how a man is proving there are no limits to your dreams when your heart and mind are open. For about four years, Dwayne Bergman has been coming here to Open Trail Ranch in Bernie. There you go. Over time, he created a special bond with Montana. He definitely has learned how to like tack his horse, groom his horse. All right, hands. Dwayne's horseback riding has also improved. When he first started, he was had full volunteer support, so he had two sidewalkers, a horse handler. He could barely even get on the horse by himself. Um, over the course of that three or four years, he is now riding all by himself. But for Dwayne, it's about spending time with Montana that makes his day extra special. When you're around Montana, how, how do you feel? Better. And that is the goal of this 100-acre ranch. Executive Director Kate Vasquez says it's a place to heal, grow, and learn. Our facility helps everybody in our community with a special need, whether that be a physical disability, a mental health um, challenge that they're going through, a time in their life that they need extra support. Take a left turn on the rail. The nonprofit's mission is to help people reach their highest potential, gain self-confidence and self-esteem through equine-oriented activities. Good job, Julia, getting her lined up correctly. The center has created ADA accessible ramps and barns. Everything inside here is easily reached from light switches, equipment, and stall doors. Keep your hands up. They are learning to ride. They are learning everything from getting their horse out of their stall to brushing them off and getting their tack on and then getting on and performing riding skills so that they can become independent. For Dwayne, he wants to continue learning and has big dreams. He talks about wanting to open up his own business. He wants to work here with us. Good job, bro. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And Open Trail Ranch is looking for volunteers, and you don't have to have any experience to help out. They'll be having a training session next weekend on the 22nd. You can learn more about this on our website, ksat.com. First, we're going to check in with Mia. 72 degrees at 914 yeah, uh, no humidity out there, so it's like you can actually like wear your hair down. Yeah. No, not, not a lot of hairspray. Hair you don't, hair you don't have to clutch no. the hairspray yes. bottle. So like we much, usually like it's like permanent hairspray exactly. here in San Antonio. It's in Antonio. your back pocket. You never leave. Can you tell it. it's a girl show? <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> That's our, our top concerns. Like hairspray, not that much Always. of it. Yeah. Can't, yeah. Mm -hmm. Today, it really, it hasn't been a bad start to the day. Maybe a little bit muggier farther south where that stalled front sits. But yeah, here in San Antonio, it just felt a little bit more comfortable when you walked out. Outside. Let's take you back outside and show you kind of those current conditions that we are looking at here officially over at San Antonio International this 9 a.m. hour 73 degrees. This morning we did see some clouds move into the San Antonio area that prevented our temperatures from taking too much of a tumble, but that drier air definitely did help out with the feel when you stepped outdoors. Still do have those lower dew points on hand here in town. 45 degrees the dew point northeast east wind on hand as well at about five miles per hour. As we take a look at temperatures across South Texas here this Friday morning, 65 in Kerrville. Y'all were actually able to dip down into the 50s earlier this morning. 73 in Hondo at 71 in Del Rio, 72 down in Eagle Pass, and 72 as well out in Kennedy. Now again, we do have that stalled front that is just kind of hanging out over the central portions of the area. This is a look at the dew point change. So dew points now compared to where we were just 24 hours ago. And you can see more of that green color south of Highway 90 
that's where some of that moisture is already filtering back into the region. Still have those lower humidity values up in the hill country, which is the good news there. Now we will continue to see that cloud cover that we've seen out there this morning scatter out and break up just a little bit more into the afternoon hours. So those temperatures are going to continue to warm low 80s in store. If you're stepping out for any lunchtime plans, those temperatures and thermometers climbing into the upper 80s and low 90s here in San Antonio this afternoon. Winds shifting back in from the south by the time the day is done, which means we're going to start to see more of that moisture move back into the area as well. And then if you're stepping out for any evening plans later tonight, we'll be in the mid 80s by 7 p.m. and then around 80 by 9 with those temperatures falling into the 70s later tonight. Not really anything going on in terms of radar. We are pretty quiet across South Texas, and really that's going to be the case for most of us into the afternoon. I do think it's possible we find some more high clouds out there as well later today, but I think closer to the coast where that moisture has been a little bit more present out there today, we'll keep about a 10% chance for maybe an isolated shower to pop up before the day is done. Don't have a lot of high hopes for that. Again, really southeast of town, but coverage should be very, very low throughout the remainder of this Friday. Again, evening plans. We will continue to see those temperatures fall into the 80s through dinner time and then into the 70s later tonight. Sunset at about 704. But I mentioned those winds shifting back in from the southeast. That's going to help pump in some additional moisture into the upcoming weekend. So the quick relief that we found from that humidity over the past 24 hours, very brief. You'll be able to notice more of that into the upcoming weekend. Lows in the 70s here in town, transitioning to the upper 80s, low 90s. But the good news is with that moisture, that's actually going to fuel a better chance for rain and thunderstorms by Sunday night and into Monday as we actually see our next front move into South Texas. Behind that, some cooler and drier air is expected there as well, which is great for all of those fall lovers. Mornings in the 50s, transitioning to the 70s, and then with that rain, we sorely need it. It's looking like maybe upwards of an inch, maybe even two inches is possible in pockets there as well. Come it's on, rain. Yeah. The 60% Awesome. Yes, it's definite. Latest drought monitor was released yesterday. We'll show you that again coming up in just a bit. And of course, it's not going to bust the drought, but any little bit definitely helps, especially after the lack of rainfall, extremely dry and hot summer that we've had this year. Absolutely. Thank you, Mia. You bet. We'll take it. Time now, 918 and 72 degrees for now. All right, with the midterm elections coming up, immigration could be a big pushing point. How recent events leading up to Election Day could affect how voters will cast their ballots. And welcome back. It's 921. The high stakes November midterm elections are less than a month away. But even though immigration has been a big topic of discussion lately, a new poll shows it might not be the top issue for many voters. But as ABC's Morgan Norwood explains, for those who say immigration is a top issue, they believe undocumented immigration is a bigger issue than legal immigration. In recent weeks, we've seen the already heated rhetoric on immigration explode from the busing and flying of migrants from overwhelmed Republican border states to sanctuary cities, to the outcry from Democratic leaders now receiving them. This is a humanitarian refugee crisis. Soon voters will decide which elected officials will oversee how America deals with immigration. Everything is riding uh, on this election in terms of control of Congress. According to the latest ABC News Washington Post poll, immigration is just sixth in the list of top issues Americans say they care about most this midterm cycle. But in a separate ABC News Ipsos poll, the vast majority of Americans who did rank immigration as a top issue believe undocumented immigration is a larger issue than legal immigration. Immigrants are humans too. The challenge here is our borders wide open. We also talk with voters in non-border states like Pennsylvania. The system is still broken. And Florida. I don't think they're being tough enough on immigration. U.S. immigration officials admit there's been a record number of apprehensions at the U.S. southern border more than 2 million nationwide. The Biden administration admitting there's work to do there, but as they scramble to address that, 
They're responding to a federal appeals court ruling that the DACA program that shields hundreds of thousands who came to the U.S. as children from deportation is unlawful. I'm going to fight to stay in this country. Then there's also the busing and flying of migrants. Texas Governor Greg Abbott and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis have bussed or flown migrants from their states to major cities. They say it's to call attention to what they described as President Biden's failed immigration policies. Now, the Treasury Department is looking into the actions of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who flew migrants, not from his own state, but from Texas to Martha's Vineyard, and whether DeSantis improperly used federal COVID relief funds to pay for those trips. So as it has for decades, immigration remains a divisive topic in this country and will likely drive hundreds of thousands of voters to the polls. But are any officials offering a real solution? There has not necessarily been any uh, substantive proposal of legislation uh, that would get us any further to any real resolution on uh, what's going on down at the border. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. And we have a few reminders as we get closer to Election Day. Early voting will be from October 24th through November 4th. And the last day to apply for mail ballots, the 28th. Election Day is November 8th, so if you want to take a look at a sample ballot for Bayer County residents, you can do so on our website. Just head to ksat.com, click on Vote 2022 section under the News tab for all of our Election Day resources. In the time right now, 925 and 73 degrees for now. More to come on GMSA at 9, including our backstage look at a local performance of the Rocky Horror Picture Show musical. Plus, our David Sears will be back with a look ahead to all the football action going on this weekend. Taking a look outside with Trans Guy. Not a lot of issues happening right now at 1604 in Petranco. Taking a look, a wide look at different Trans Guide cameras. Haven't really seen any flashing lights or backups. If anything pops up, we'll let you know about it. And welcome back, it's 928. A one of a kind event is coming to Uvalde next year and at the heart of it are plans to help the city heal. The Balling for Uvalde World Weekend will serve as a fundraiser for a new rec center. Organizers also plan to honor the Robb Elementary School victims. The fundraiser will have charity concerts, an international celebrity, a family soccer tournament, and lots of other family fun. The youth mentoring organization behind the event hopes to raise $15 million and is anticipating thousands of people to be there in person and millions more to tune in to their live stream worldwide. The goal is to build the state of the art rec center, provide mental health and leadership programs, as well as assist the immediate surviving families of the Robb Elementary shooting. The complex is going to be named after these, these families. You know, you're going to have the Leila Salazar you know, track. You're going to have the Eva Miralev conference room, the Jet Rivnos playground. Look, there's going to be two events in 2023, the Super Bowl and the Balling for Uvalde World Weekend. Trust me. Well, the fundraiser is scheduled for February 4th and 5th, and a kickoff event is set for November 6th. A website to donate and get tickets is already up. You can find that information on ksat.com. And now to the economy, which has been a big talking point for a lot of people. The latest numbers continuing to show prices rising on just about everything. As ABC's Derek Dennis reports, the question now is, what will the government do about it? This morning, the new reality on inflation. Prices are still rising up 8.2 percent last month compared to the same month last year and up four tenths of a percent from August, which is double what the experts predicted. We are paying more for just about everything. One bright spot has been gasoline, but even that now is trending higher again. Rent is up 7 percent, groceries 11 percent and medical insurance up nearly 30 percent. All this means the Federal Reserve is almost certain to raise interest rates by another three quarters of a point next month, making credit card debt and loans more expensive. Mortgage rates already surging to their highest level in 20 years, now approaching 7 percent. One bright spot? jobs. The labor market still remains strong. Consumers appear to still be spending, although we are starting to change our spending habits. Americans are squeezed by the cost of living. 
It's been true for years, and folks don't need to be a report to tell them they're being squeezed. President Biden speaking in California as the government announced a cost of living increase for Social Security recipients, 8.7 percent, the highest in 40 years, amounting to an extra $140 per month on average. Critics say the Biden administration's spending policies are the root of the inflation problem, but the president disagreeing. The biggest problem is the world's challenge, global inflation and the pandemic and Putin's unconscionable invasion of Ukraine. Here's the deal. Because of my economic plan, we are better positioned than any other major economy in the world to weather the challenges that come through this as a stronger country. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Let's look outside with live cam. 74 degrees, it's actually pretty nice out there right now. Nick. Clouds, yep. Clouds still kind of hanging on a little bit here in San Antonio. We'll try to see that break up a little bit more into the afternoon. But yes, so we had that front that moved in yesterday morning. It didn't feel half bad when you stepped outside this morning in San Antonio, thanks to those lower humidity values still in place. But unfortunately, we are going to see the Gulf moisture quickly move back in for the upcoming weekend ahead of our next front that arrives Sunday night and Monday. First look at temperatures out there here in San Antonio, 73 over at the airport, 75 at Stinson, 73 both as well at Kelly, as well as Randolph. We will see those temperatures climb, aiming for the upper 80s and even low 90s in spots across South Texas into this afternoon. We've got a forecast high around 89 to 90 officially here in San Antonio. If you're stepping out for any of those evening plans, say to a Friday night football game, that one's for David over there, kickoff in in the mid 80s temperatures falling to about 80 by half time. We are going to see that humidity again move in this weekend. Still going to be warmer than average, but we do have better news in terms of a cool down next week with that front. And of course, a good chance for some scattered rain and storms. We'll have all of those details in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Mia. Quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. Skies look nice. <laughs> There's a look at Loop 1604 and Petranco and now Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Things are moving right now. It is Friday, and that means it's time for high school football. That's right. David Sears joining us again with a look at the high school, college, and pro football action packed into this weekend. David. Yeah, a lot of it all actually started last night, but it's good to see Mia fill in for Justin and still make all the kicks. We, we don't have to worry about this. <laughs> so, see. Good there you go, go Mia. <laughs> when you got that going for you, you can't lose. Mia's also like a better sport about her Aggies, so. Try oh, to be. Oh, wait, no, she's like, absolutely. I try to be. I really do. Yeah, we take Justin. He's always like, ugh. That's true. We got to keep it. There you go. There you go. So I don't have to worry this weekend. Aggies are off. Big Gabe Gummer got started last night. The annual Gucci Bowl. Clark Cougars 5-2 and two in district. It's a showdown against Churchill. Chargers were 2-4 and four first quarter. This is what records don't mean anything. Forced the Cougars to punt, the snap, block. Sutton Cantrell, Ty Webb is there to scoop it up for the end zone, 7-0. And look at this, Copelander Stadium final, 24-7 Churchill. Another district showdown, this one 29-6A, Fair Stadium between the Warren Warriors and the O'Connor Panthers. Warren in the red zone, quarterback Antonio Mesa takes the snap, fires to Elijah Rialzola in the end zone. 13-yard score, 7-0 Warren. Final from Ferris, 40-12. to Warren gets another highlights and scores from last night are on our website, kset.com. Check it out. The big game and our big game coverage tonight features Alamo Heights taking out of Harlandale for the District 14-5A Division II title. And that one of nine games that you're going to be able to stream live on the BGC app. Andrew Seeley previews some of the best matchups on tonight's streaming schedule. It's very important having this undefeated record. Uh, the momentum we have, I hope to carry it over into the game. You can't go overconfident to any game. You have to go and treat every opponent like they're, they're going to be the best team in the world, and so we have to prepare adequately for that. For the first time since 2014, Alamo Heights and Harlandale will meet on the gridiron. There isn't much history between the Mules and Indians over the last decade, but there's plenty of mutual respect. 
Both teams enter Friday's matchup with high-flying offenses and matching 5-0 records in district play. It's everything that you want you know, in a team, they do. And so we have to match that. Our intensity, our effort, our, our speed of the game, we've got to be a little bit faster, a little bit better than they are on Friday. Adam Heights is the type of team that, uh, that you want to measure yourself up against. And uh, you know they're, they're a very good team. It'll be a great challenge for us to, to play against them. And it will be a playoff atmosphere. <laughs> Elsewhere in Class 5A action, Veterans Memorial looks to bounce back from a tough loss to Liberty Hill last week with a game against Bastrop Friday night in 13-5A Division II. The Patriots offense is red hot, scoring at least 31 points in every game they've played this season. That is a shot down the field. He's got a man. And in Class 14-4A Division I, 1-0 Somerset travels to 1-0 Fredericksburg. The Bulldogs and Billies both come into Friday's matchup after posting dominant shutout district victories. You can stream all three of these games live on the BGC app Friday night starting at 7 p.m. And, of course, we'll have all the highlights on the night beat. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. College football, A&M off this weekend, Texas Tech off this weekend, UT not, UTSA not. They take on Florida International on the road tonight. They're going to be 33 and a half point favorites at kickoff. The last time the road runners were that heavy of favorites, their game this season against Texas Southern, they were 44 point favorites. The road runners won that one 52-24. They didn't cover. In fact, they were only up by four at halftime until they outscored Texas Southern 31-7 in the second half. Kickoff tonight. 7 o'clock. The Longhorns host Iowa State tomorrow morning in Royal Memorial Stadium. They are two touchdown favorites, that despite the fact that the Cyclones beat the Longhorns last year 30 to 7. Hate to bring that up for Texas fans. In that game, Bijan Robinson was held to just 90 yards, not a single touchdown, and Hudson Card was only able to throw for just over 100 yards and only one TD. Now the Horns are coming off their biggest win in the history of the Texas OU rivalry. 49 nothing over OU. Ooh, wow. And with a quarterback they did not have last year in Quinn Ewers, who threw for 289 yards and four touchdowns, with B. John Robinson contributing another 230 yards on the ground. Kickoff in Austin tomorrow morning. It's early, so you got to get, get on the road because I-35 is going to be packed. That one's at 11 a.m. Cowboys play Sunday night against the Eagles. 720. That is the game of the week. Eagles undefeated. Cowboys 4-1. And, and Cooper Rush is going to start that game again. Dak Prescott is still injured. So Cooper Rush is going after five in a row. To see if the Cowboys can beat the Eagles on the road in Philly. For those Philly fans, ooh, they are some, they are some interesting fans. That's all we're going to say about them. All right, baseball last night, or yesterday afternoon, actually. Well, yesterday afternoon and then in the last evening. Game two of the ALDS, Astros Mariners. Down 2-1 in the sixth. Jordan Alvarez hit that homer, and then it was Alex Bregman coming up with a single with two on. The Astros did it again. They scored enough to win over Seattle 4-2, and Jordan did it again. You see him hit that homer to the opposite field, hit it over to left field. Mm -hmm. He did that the night before when he hit that walk-off. They call it a walk-off. Nice. Because he had a three-run homer. They were in the bottom of the ninth. They had two outs, and if he doesn't hit the homer, they don't win. He hits the homer, so Jordan is doing good. Let's go Strohs. Let's go Cowboys. Cowboys. It's going to be a good weekend. And Longhorns. Uh, ought to be fun. And Longhorns. <laughs> and, no, and, no and Aggies comment. and Texas Tech. Yeah. No I, I, comment. I, I, yeah. I, I got to comment on that. <laughs> Thanks, Texas Dave. Tech is off, so we're good. Okay, okay. okay. This, this time. Can't right. lose if you're off. That, well, that's can't true. Can't win, but you can't, you can't lose. Yeah. If you're off, you can cheer for uh, UT. <laughs> <laughs> I got yard work to do tomorrow. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I got to take advantage of Tech Tech being off. All, All right. right. Thank you, David. <laughs> Time now, 939 and 74 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Here's a look at what's coming up next. Coming up, we're going backstage to Transylvania to give you a behind the scenes look at the local production of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Welcome back. A unique production in San Antonio is bringing live interactions from center stage to the audience. The Rocky Horror Picture Show musical is coming to the Harlequin Theater at, after 47 years, and this time they want you to say the lines. Producer Alexis Page gives us a backstage look at the show. Fleeting, and it's time for you to get your tickets to the local production of Rocky Horror Picture Show. What I love about Rocky is honestly, 
It just invites anyone and everyone who might feel marginalized, who might just feel a little odd, and it brings everybody into a close-knit family and encourages their individuality. And I mean, that's why I think people flock to it because authenticity, frankly, is what everyone craves. It's not your typical musical theater experience. It is very interactive, but you know, we'll get you on your feet. We'll ask you to sing along. It's a totally different experience every time you see it. A big part of the show is the call outs, which is when the audience interacts with the actors and kind of sets the tone as well. So it's always going to be a different experience, but bring your imagination and get ready to have a lot of fun. I hear you wish to learn the time walk. I do. It's just a jump to the left. With this cast, just head to ksat.com for showtimes and ticket information. Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News. And we apologize to all our viewers yes. because now that song is going to be in yep. your head for the whole weekend. All day. <laughs> Definitely it's all day. great tune. I love Rocky Horror Picture Show, <laughs> yeah. but now it's definitely in my head. Yeah. stuck with you. Looks like they were having a good time, for sure. Yeah. Well, I understand it's going to be very helpful if we have some rain. Yes, it very much is. We've got one of the best chances that we've had in quite some time in the work Sunday night and into Monday. Let's get you a look at the latest drought monitor that was released yesterday morning, just in case you missed it. To no one's real surprise due to the lack of beneficial rainfall. Of course, we still do have those drought conditions in place across the vast majority of our area. We've seen a slight expansion in some of those conditions with this week's update. No drastic widespread changes, but again, I wish we could have some changes for the better. It's not going to be drought busting, but any little bit helps and we will have that chance Sunday night and into Monday. But this drought monitor update still showing extreme to even exceptional drought in place near the San Antonio Metro and stretching up the I-35 corridor as well. We are mainly dry out there today and into the upcoming weekend for the most part. Maybe a very isolated shower closer to the coast southeast of San Antonio before the day is done today. 20% chance for your Sunday, 40% chance into Sunday night, and then about a 60 to maybe even 70% potential for some scattered rain and thunderstorms on Monday as we continue to see our next front push through South Texas. So you can see that then moving into the area behind that cooler as well as drier air in its wake. Now, not everybody is going to see these totals, but we have been seeing in guidance that we could find anywhere between one to two plus inches of rainfall in localized spots, especially for those that do tap into some of the heavier rain and a couple of thunderstorms as well. Still just a little too early to talk exact totals and exact locations, but of course we'll continue to update that into the upcoming weekend as we get a little bit closer, definitely welcome changes, not just in terms of the rainfall, but for all of those fall lovers, we are expecting some cooler temperatures into next week. That follows an above average weekend with more moisture working back in. So we'll start off in the 70s, temperatures transitioning to the upper 80s, low 90s over the next 48 hours before we see potentially some mornings in the 50s next week. Probably we'll want the jacket there with those afternoon highs contained to the 70s. So of course, definitely check back in over the weekend as we continue to fine tune the details on that. Until then, still have some clouds on hand out there this Friday morning in San Antonio and really stretching westward across Highway 90 up in the hill country as well. We still have that stalled boundary in place across South Texas. More moisture on the south side of that boundary. 74 now in San Antonio, 67 in Kerrville, 73 in Hondo, 76 in Pleasanton. It's 68 currently up in Rock Springs. Again, just a little bit more 
humidity on the south side of that front still do have some of that drier air in place here in town and stretching farther up to the north as well as the west. We should see that cloud cover break up just a little bit more into the afternoon. Temperatures climbing above average afternoon expected upper 80s, low 90s, and then those temperatures falling through the 80s if you're stepping out for any of those Friday evening plans. Now into the upcoming weekend, we see those winds turn in from the southeast. That's going to filter in more of that moisture back into South Texas. So those dew points then rise before we see that front move through. And then of course, drier air filters in in its wake, which is one of the reasons why we will see those temperatures cool down just a little bit more efficiently into next week. So if you've been waiting to pull out the sweaters, sweater weather, Next week, especially in the mornings, looking a whole lot better. And then highs in the 70s. I mean, that's not bad at all. It's actually a little bit below average for this time of year. That's Pulled out good. my leggings this morning. All of it. I was like, oh, there's a lot of lint on these. <laughs> yeah, just to and get then ready. the sweater, yeah, I'm like. You're eyeing them. I know. Next week, it's going to be a good Sweat, week. Sweaters and baggy, I mean, baggy sweaters and leggings and boots. Yeah. The uniform. I love it. Yeah. Get yeah. ready, yeah. South Texas. The uniform's coming. <laughs> we love it. I've had the hoodie hanging up. Yes. All October, you know, just for the hope that it would happen. And Look, you manifested all that great energy. Oh, thank Thanks, you. Here we go. Thank you. Sarah, both of y'all. Thank, thank you, you, universe. <laughs> all right, it's 950 and 74 degrees. And Halloween ends. It's out. In but before we go to break, police in Raleigh, North Carolina, releasing some new information this morning regarding the mass shooting yesterday. So according to police, the suspect is a 15 year old boy. He is in custody. They say he was taken to the hospital with injuries, but it's unclear if they were self inflicted. He is still in the hospital this morning. A motive for the shooting is still not clear and no other new information was released. We're going to continue to follow the story on our later newscasts. Welcome back. It's 953. Jamie Lee Curtis wraps up her 40 plus years in the Halloween film franchise this weekend. CNN's Rick Damagella talked with Curtis about her Halloween role and what it means to her as the movie hits theaters today. Her legacy is now mine and it is cemented. It is tattooed on me. I don't have tattoos, but Laurie Strode, you know, strode strong all day long would be a a really good tattoo for me because no matter what not Halloween like actress dies I'm dead Halloween actress dies oh. Laurie Strode is Jamie Lee Curtis Jamie Lee Curtis is Laurie Strode we are bound we are woven together at this point she was a character back in 1978 now she's she and I are, are one and, and the same, and I get her legacy. Curtis is joined in the film by her 1978 Halloween co-star, Kyle Richards. Jamie and I would uh, be sitting on set at like, you know, three o'clock in the morning, freezing, bundled up next to each other, and she'd say, you know, can you believe that we're here all these years later? together, you know, making these same movies, playing these characters. The story and Curtis's character may even defy fans' expectations. There's a moment where Lori smiles. She smiles. Lori Strode smiled in a movie. That tells you where we are emotionally. And then, of course, the ceiling comes crashing down on her a second later. Is 12 really enough? Can we get one more? How about 13? They should, the you know what's going to happen? That's so this the is all marketing. 13. They're going to come back and be like, no, 13. Will be the last yeah. one. That would make more sense. Yeah, I well, think so. It would be Jamie appropriate. Jamie Lee Curtis yeah. is yeah. Lori, Lori, Jamie They're Curtis. They're bound. They're bound. Yeah. And then they have to come back <laughs> and air it on Friday the 13th. Yeah. yeah. We have this all planned out. <laughs> hey. Have a great weekend, guys. Happy Friday.